Hi everybody, welcome back to Pine Box Tales. Remember, if you have a story, send it in, pineboxtales at gmail.com. And please remember to hit the like button. You know I really appreciate it when you do. And if you happen to be new to the channel, I'd love it if you would subscribe. Okay everybody, let's get right into today's story. The submitter titled it, we didn't listen. My name is June, and in 2001, my parents wanted to go visit my grandparents. We lived in New York, and my grandparents lived in Vermont. At the time, I was 13, and my brother Jeff was 12. Neither of us wanted to go. We both thought it would be really boring. Just about every year, and sometimes even twice a year, my parents made us go. When we were a lot younger, we really liked it, but at 12 and 13, we just wanted to hang out with our friends. We were upset about going, especially me, because I had a tendency to get car sick. It didn't matter. In July of 2001, we arrived in Vermont. My cousins, Sue, Jake, and Wendy, were already there. Sue was 15, Wendy 13, and Jake was 12. My cousins lived in Vermont, not too far from my grandparents, but their parents went on vacation and sent them to be with our grandparents. We normally weren't all there at the same time. My grandparents' house was so small. It only had two bedrooms, so I was wondering where we were all going to sleep. My cousin Wendy showed us this really big tent that was set up in the backyard. It was huge. It was definitely enough to fit all of us kids, and plenty of room to spare. My cousins took a bunch of blankets out so the ground wouldn't be so hard. There were pl plenty of pillows out there. My grandfather gave us a couple of flashlights and told us that the side door would be left unlocked and we can come and go as we needed. That first night was kind of fun. We told scary stories to each other in the tent, and the next day, Sue asked if we wanted to go into the woods to see something they found. They said they'd show us, but we had to promise not to tell anybody. We agreed, but I couldn't figure out how we were going to get back there. Or how they got back there. Behind my grandparents' house, they had this six-foot-tall fence. And there was no gate in it, and all their neighbors had the same fence all down the whole street. But well, my cousins had it all figured out. We had to walk down five or six houses from where my grandpa and grandma lived. But eventually we found a house that had a gate on their part of the fence. So we cut through the yard and went through their fence. And before you knew it, we were there walking in the woods. We were walking about 30 minutes. I was tired. I was irritated. All we were doing was walking. I even asked them at one point, are we actually going to see something, or are we just going to keep walking? They promised that we were going to see something, I just had to be patient. We walked a lot more. We must have been walking forever, at least that's how it felt. But finally we did see something. We got to what they wanted to show us, but I wasn't impressed. It was a fresh, clean, cold stream. And yeah, sure, the water was really good. It was cold and clean and it tasted good. But I wasn't terribly excited over it. Probably because it took so long to get there. My brother kept asking where the stream went. I really didn't care. <laughs> but he kept begging and begging. So I finally agreed. So we followed the stream. We followed it and walked for at least another five minutes. And then we reached this old wooden bridge. It was really old. It had trees growing through it, and the wood was all rotted, and the wood was broken in many places. And there we were, just standing there. I was thinking, I'm ready to leave. But one of my cousins asked if we wanted to see something that was really, really cool. 
I thought about it a minute, and I thought, well, I'd already come this far. Why not? So we continued on. We continued walking for quite a while, actually. I think I even asked again if they were just messing with us. They said, no, we're going to show you something. It's right around the next bend, in fact. Well, sure enough, just as we went past the next bend, we saw it. There was this hill with these big doors built into it. Huge doors. Who would put doors on a hill? This was no building. It was just this big hill. And there were two giant rocks in front of the doors. My cousins told my brother and I that they thought the doors were broken somehow. They were stuck in the open position. We went inside to check it out. There was this one single room, a big room. It looked like somebody built some kind of secret hideout a long time ago. The only thing inside was one broken chair, but it was still pretty cool. I was looking at the walls. They were all dirt with these vines growing through. At that point, I felt like my cousins delivered on their promise. The long walk was worth it. But suddenly, we started hearing this knocking sound. We all froze. The knocking sound, well, it sounded like it was coming from behind the room or the hill. We went outside to look around, but we didn't see anybody. We went back in the room, still looking around, but once again, we heard these knocking sounds. It sounded like it was coming from behind us. It kind of sounded like somebody was hitting sticks together. I asked my cousins what the sounds were. They didn't know. But then we heard more sounds, different sounds. It reminded me of somebody banging on a drum. Then we heard more of the stick knocking sounds. But in a different place, they sounded like it was more in front of us now. I was starting to get nervous, a little scared even. It didn't feel like we should be there anymore. I kept telling them that we had to go now. I asked my cousins, what's past this spot? What's beyond this hill and these doors? They said, come on, we'll show you. So we walked up the top of the hill, then started down the other side. My cousin said that if we continue on this path, it'll eventually lead us back to where we started, close to where my grandparents live. Well, just before we started walking, we started hearing the knocking sounds again. They seemed to be coming from all around us this time. First to our left, then ahead of us, then behind us. We continued walking, thinking eventually we'll outwalk it. We'll get further from it. We reached a point on the path where there was now this clearing. It was just this big dirt clearing with nothing in it except for an old car. And you can tell the car had been on fire probably years ago. The doors were missing and the hood too. And you could see how charred it was from the fire, both inside and out. We couldn't figure out how did anybody get a car all the way back there. This was pretty deep into the woods, and there were no roads. The occasional path, maybe, but nothing that would fit a car. And then suddenly, we were all startled by this incredibly loud screaming. This scream set us all off running, and we ran and we ran until we were out of breath. As we were running, we continued hearing the knocking, the drumming, and the screaming. At that point, we ran, not just because we were a little afraid. It was because we were absolutely terrified at that point. Even though we had run quite a distance already, it seemed like we weren't getting any further away from whatever was causing these sounds. We continued hearing more knocking. And then we saw the trees start to shake to the right of us, then behind us. We ran again, but after several minutes, we just couldn't take it anymore. We had to stop for at least a minute to catch our breath. We had rested for not more than a minute. 
and when we started hearing these cracking sounds, one after the other, crack, crack, and crack, and crack, followed by repetitive thuds. My cousin Sue said it sounded like trees being chopped or cracked and falling afterward. The new sounds came too. Woof, woof, woof. Then we heard this unbelievably loud scream, louder than any of the other screams we heard before. This scream was so loud, we had to cover our ears, and even then, it was still hurting our heads. That scream made us all take off running again. We were running as fast as we could, but all the sounds, all of them, the drumming, the cracking, everything, the whooping, the tree shaking, it stayed with us. Like we couldn't get away from them. Once we got past the old broken down bridge, the sounds finally stopped. Or at least quieted down. We stopped for a minute to catch our breath. Our sides were aching so bad from running. As we were paused there just past that bridge, a large rock came flying out of nowhere and hit the back of my leg really hard. It hurt a lot, and I started crying at that point. Not just because of the pain on my leg, but I think because of the fear, too. Well, that caused my cousin Wendy to start crying, too. Then I saw my brother and my cousin start picking up rocks to fight back. My brother started yelling, It's there! It's there! Right there! I see it! I turned around. And I did see something, something dark and big, but I couldn't quite make out what it was. Then Wendy and Sue saw something too, and whatever they saw, they must have saw more than I did because they screamed at the top of their lungs. Their screaming made us all start running again. And we didn't stop until we reached the road that my grandparents lived on. When we finally got to my grandparents, we told them and my parents everything, everything we heard, saw, experienced. My mom put ice on my leg, and I didn't know it until then. I thought that Wendy started crying earlier because I started crying. But that's when I learned that she started crying because she too got hit. She had this huge red bump in the middle of her back. My mom put some ice on her too. Once we all settled and quieted down, my grandparents called us into the living room. I have to say, they looked angrier than I'd ever seen them look. They were mad. My grandfather was just shaking his finger at us, and he told us not a peep out of any of you. If I don't ask you a question, you just listen. I don't think any of us had ever seen him this angry. And he just started saying, Damn it, you kids. How many times? I must have told you kids a thousand times never to go into those damn woods. But you're stubborn. Damn it, you're stubborn. Why don't you listen? He would pause for a minute, and he would pace and rub the back of his neck, which he only ever did when he was really upset. And he would just start up again. Damn you kids, why don't you listen? Damn it, damn it. And he turned to us and he said, There are things in those woods. And they see it as their home. And damn it, we got no right being there. Grandpa then asked us how far we went. He pointed to us and he said, Don't you lie to me. I want to know exactly where you were, how far into those woods you were. And we told him about the burned out car with a look on his face. Grandpa was pissed, but he also turned white. He looked sick. He turned to us again and he said, you were intruding on their home. They wanted you gone. Do you understand that? Everything you heard, all that knocking and drumming, everything you heard, the whooping, that's their way of talking to each other. And that screaming and the drumming, the tree shaking, 
All of that. That was to try to scare you off. And you're lucky that's all they did. And if they were screaming like that, it could mean that you got too close to one of their young ones. My grandfather was still very upset with us. Still pacing, rubbing his neck, and occasionally saying, Damn it, why don't you kids listen? I've never heard him carry on like this. He went on to explain that beyond that burned car, there actually is a road, a dirt road, but the road was blocked off by big fallen trees, and he said there's no trespassing signs posted there too. Past the road, there are many caves. My grandmother spoke up, and she told us that that burned car, the car we saw once belonged to a man who went parking there one time with his girlfriend in that clearing. Grandma said this was decades ago, before the dirt road was blocked off. She said that the couple in the car were attacked. That's how the doors and the hood got pulled off. Grandma said that the woman was found by a passerby crawling on the main road. She was horribly injured, bleeding, clothes torn. They called an ambulance for her, and she actually died on the way to the hospital. But the ambulance crew was able to resuscitate her, and she wound up in a coma for a few months. When she finally came out of the coma months later, she didn't even know who she was, not even her name. Grandma said she was never the same after that, even with time and therapy and the man, her boyfriend. Well, nobody knows. He was never seen again. After several years passed, he was presumed dead. Grandma also told us that there used to be a man that once lived near that old broken bridge. And one day he came out shooting at these creatures. Well, that old man, he went missing too, many, many years ago. And after several years passed, he too was pronounced dead. Our grandparents told us that no matter where we were or when, if there were any woods around, even just a dozen trees or so, doesn't have to be big woods. If we ever hear what we heard that day, we need to get out immediately. We need to run. They said, always, always leave. Grandpa said that maybe the creatures realized that we were just young and they just wanted to make sure that we didn't keep coming back to intrude on their home. And Grandma said we were very, very lucky. It seemed like they were just trying to chase us away. Grandma said, if they really meant to do you harm, you wouldn't be sitting here right now. My cousins and I, we listened to our grandparents after that. That incident, well, it taught us many things. That was the day we learned about Bigfoot. And none of us have ever forgotten that terrifying day. Well, June, quite the experience, especially given that you were just kids. And I agree with Grandma, you were very lucky. Well, guys, what do you think? You know I'll be dying to see your comments, so please drop them down below. All right, everybody, that's it for today, but you know I'll be back with another story, ASAP. Until then, everybody, stay safe, be careful out there, and keep your eye out for the scary and the strange. Bye for now, everybody.